Yo, what's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be making a video on AWS servers and how to set them up and use them. AWS is what I use to run my bots on if I'm not running local. The speeds are really fast and good, especially for the price. It's not bad when you can get the credits for it on eBay. I'll show how to buy those at the end of the video. So start off by setting up the AWS servers. You want to type in AWS, AWS Amazon dot com should bring you here so you want to go, then go to create an AWS account then you make your login you, and you want to make sure you save all your information so when you need to sign in you'll remember your login this you can just then just keep on going through this part then here you're going to put your info for where you'll be billed to I would just do the basic support plan. All right, now that you're in, you can you want to sign into the console. Use the email you signed up with. All right, so what you want to do to set up a server, you want to go to services and then go to EC2. I, I have mine starred on the account I usually use, so it'll show up here so it's easier to go to. EC2. So right after you make your account, you might get a page that looks like this. So you just gotta wait a little bit. It usually doesn't take that long for it to go away and it'll let you actually use the service. All right, so now once you're in your dashboard, you wanna go to instances, and then you wanna start to create an instance, which will be like your first server instance. You want to press launch instance. I like to use, so these are all different versions of computers you can go on. I would just use, I'd recommend everyone using just Win, Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base. All right, so once you're in here, these are all the different specs of the servers you could use. The one I always just like to use, I'll just search for it. I'll do control, control F. So it's this one. So this is the RAM. So it has, I think, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, 64 gigabytes of RAM. And I think it's 16 CPUs. Yeah, 16 CPUs. Pretty good storage. This is the one I just like to use. But you can use whichever one you feel would be best for you. So after that, you want to press review and launch. Launch. And so you got to make a key pair. So to do that, you want to press create a new key pair, key pair name. Um, just name it, I'll just name it something random. They don't want to share this with anyone. Download a key pair. And I'm, I would you, you need that, so move it to like an important um, folder that you'll be able to access for it to successfully. So when you first start, if you're doing this all super fast, you might get this launch failed. That's because your account is brand new and needs to verify some stuff. So what you can do, you just need to wait a little bit. Like it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes, like the other thing. And just wait for that and then refresh it and should let you go. All right, so now you should get this. It says your instances are now launching. So after that, you can just go to view instances. So here it says running. So what you can do, right click on it, you wanna press connect, RTP client, and you wanna get, you need your password, so when you, when you, um, 
start to log into the server, you have the password, so get password. And then you get passwords not available. Please wait at least four minutes after launching an instance port trying to receive. So this might happen again, where you need to wait a little bit after the instance is created. So again, I just have to wait a few minutes until I can get the password. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do once you get here, you're gonna go back to that file that you had downloaded earlier, open that up, so then copy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to blur mine out because it's, I don't want people logging into my server. You copy that, paste it there, and you press decrypt password. You need to make sure you have the begin RSV private key, I'll unblur that here, and then the bottom, this part here. So now you should get your password to show up here, press the copy button, and you wanna also save that in somewhere somewhere important that you'll remember and you won't lose it. All right, so then after that, go back to instances, running, you press connect, RDP, cli RDP client, download remote desktop file. So this will be the file that lets you access the server. Open that, connect, Password, so it's the password that you just got, the one you sh that's right here. Paste that, okay, yes. All right, and now the server should launch. Let's go that load. All right, and now you're in. But what you, you have to do, you have to go to type server manager in the taskbar. Server manager. And then you just wanna turn off some firewall settings. So it lets you download your bots and can access Discord and download Chrome and stuff. So once you're here, you wanna to go to IE enhanced security configuration. You wanna make sure you have these two off so you can download Chrome and stuff. All right, so once you're there, you should be good to go. You can go to Internet Explorer, type in, I always have to download Chrome first. And from here on, it's pretty much just a normal computer it works the same way. You can test your. Oh yeah, I'm gonna. Sh I want to show how the um, internet speeds compared to a, nor a normal. My like normal local computer. So yeah, I'll run a um, internet speed test just to show how much faster it is. So you can see in the server it's a thousand, one hundred forty-six point five megabytes per second download speed, and I'll show you on my um, normal computer. Also, if you wanna get out of it, you can just, this is the minimum, this is the button I usually use. So you can just minimize like this, like a normal application you have. I'll show my speed test here. And this is the speed test on my local internet. But you can see it's still, yeah, it's still like almost 200 megabytes per second slower than my server. And using the server is great because I can run a bot on my local and then one on my server and it won't affect it. Like it won't make, by having two bots going, it won't make it lag more because if one's on my server, but if I was both running them on my local PC, it'd make it lag. All right, so after that, to close your server, you can just press the X button, disconnect server, or what you can do is go to the instances and press, just right click it, stop server. And you want to make sure, this is very important, that once you're done with your server, you right click it and press stop instance. If you don't do that, you'll just continue to get bills. I have a lot of friends that have kept it running overnight or even some that leave it going for months that just get feed like crazy amounts of money for something they're not even using. So you wanna, it's very important to make sure that you're turning them off after you use them. 
and don't leave the site until it should say stopped like this. All right, so for buying credits for AWS, you can just go to ebay.com and then if you just look up AWS credit. I like to buy the $100, there should be some for $30. It looks like the price might have increased. Last time I bought it, I bought $100 for a $100 credit for $30. I'm sure you're you gonna probably find another one, some for cheaper. Base the first one here if you're just gonna do this. So you just purchase this and they'll send you a message on eBay or to your email, I forget, with a code. And with that code, you just go to the AWS, you go to the billing dashboard. Credit, you wanna go to the credits, redeem credit. Enter the You wanna enter the code they give you there and then the security code, redeem credit, and then it'll just be applied to your account. And from then on, it should just charge the credits until it runs out. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If I missed anything or you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you want to outreach to me, I have all my socials linked in the description. And thanks for watching.